right, guys, we're going to start looking at accounting for merchandising operations, uh, which is the retail side of accounting. Up until this point, chapters one through four, we've only been looking at a service company. So now we want to start and we want to get into a retail company. There are three uh, types of companies that you have out there. You have a service company, which are not selling any um, goods or services. They're not really making anything. They are just providing a service. Then you have your retail companies or merchandising companies that are actually selling goods or services. So they are purchasing these goods from a wholesaler or from someone else, and then they're going to uh, resell them to the public. And then the last one that we're going to look at in Accounting 102 is the merchandise or the I'm sorry manufacturing company. These are the companies that are actually manufacturing um, what they are selling. And so those are the three types um, we're going to concentrate in chapters five and six on the merchandising company. Um, some new accounts that we are going to look at for um, this particular chapter. Um, and the merchandising company, we will have uh, a new revenue account. Um, that would be the sales account. It also can be called sales revenue. Um, it can go either way, be called either one of these two accounts. Another one that we have um, is going to be termed as an expense account. Um, this is a cost of goods sold account. It's also um, called cost of goods um, merchandise things like that, but cost of goods sold is really the one that we want to use um, mainly as far as our account is concerned. We also would have um, inventory. Inventory is a current asset, um, and this is where when we actually purchase items to be sold, uh, we put them in our inventory account. Other accounts would be the sales return and allowance account. This is if we have um, a customer return goods to us or if something's damaged and we give them an allowance we would put it into this account and the last one is a sales discount sales discounts are when we offer our clients a discount if they pay us very quickly so like if they pay us within 10 days we might give them a one percent discount so that we can keep um, our cash flow happening at a rapid rate um, when we look at this, we are looking at an operating cycle. Um, an operating cycle is the time it takes to, for us to purchase our merchandise and then turn it back into cash. When we look at a merchandising company, we have to take our cash, buy inventory. We wait and it, the inventory is then delivered. We put it on our shelves. Then eventually we're going to sell that inventory. Once we sell the inventory, sometimes we receive cash immediately, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we sell it based on accounts receivable. Once um, it goes to accounts receivable, then we wait to receive the cash. And then once we receive that cash, then we can put it um, back to buying new inventory again and the cycle starts all over. So that is what we're looking at when we look at the operating cycle. It's just the time it takes to actually purchase that inventory or merchandise and turn it back into cash again. We have two inventory systems that we're going to um, that, that are out there. Uh, the first one is the perpetual system. This is a system that most people today use because most people, uh, most companies and businesses have a point of sale system. And so since they have a point of sale system, they actually will have barcodes on all of their um, inventory. It will be put into inventory when they receive it and then it's taken out of inventory once it is sold. So we are constantly keeping very detailed records. Um, they are continuously it shows what inventory we actually have um, on hand at one time. So each time a sale occurs, each time we purchase inventory, we actually do a journal entry for that. Under our periodic system, um, we actually would use different accounts, and we're not even going to go into the periodic system because it's really not used that much um, today because of the computer systems that we have. Um, so this was used in a lot of mom and pop stores before computers um, and for most people before computers became um, 
easily accessible. Uh, with it, you put everything into a purchase category, then you figure out what you have on hand at the end of the time period by doing a physical inventory count, and you come up with what your cost of goods sold is. For both of these, you have to do a physical inventory, uh, but for the periodic system, you have to do it to find out what your cost of goods sold is. For perpetual, you're just making sure that nobody has really stole anything um, and just make sure that nothing's gone bad and just really to keep up with those different items um, that way. So that's what we have um, with those types of systems. We are going to come back and we will look at um, the perpetual inventory system. We're going to look at how we record purchases. We'll look at how we record sales. Um, and we'll just work some worksheets um, using those pieces of information um, to help you better understand the information.